Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to round 14 of the Cologne Regional Championship. We are concluding our Swiss rounds for today and yeah, both of these players we that are coming up on stream now are playing for the spot in top 8. And we have uh, Brandon Kammermann from Netherlands against Alexander Weber from uh, Austria. Yep. And it's going to be a really, really interesting matchup um, wi which will be awaiting us. It's going to be Reshizad, uh, Ability Reshizad versus Spiritum. Yeah, so we've already had a lot of Reshizad already uh, throughout the tournament and already today. Shows that most we maybe have ma managed to like kind of avoid showing it too much yesterday on stream. We are now at the point where it's just converted so heavily into the top cut and those on winning ins that we kind of have no choice. Like we have to feature it. It's in yes. all the key matchups. Yes. And then we went, well, let's have a look at what else. Uh, wait, a Spiritum is on a winning in? And having looked at the uh, the slip, uh, the uh, things, it's kind of apparent that it has a counter to basically everything in here, right? Like, Spiritum itself is a very efficient non-GX attacker. Yes, it can hit important numbers uh, in just a few turns. Yep. So. Um, you know, through the, its own um, ability to set itself up and also Angrish Cry doing 10 plus 30 for each damage counter on it. Yes. Uh, then you can play things like Hustle Belt to get the numbers even more um, it, uh, up there. It can do a lot of things and hit very yes. important numbers. So it's not surprising that in a, such a heavy tag team format, it's managed to do so well. So both players are getting more or less set up. Uh, so Brennan on the left yes. and Alex Alexander on the right hand side. And uh, both players, I think, I d so I brought them over to the stream area and I was like, hey, have you guys been on stream before? And they were like, uh, Brendan was like, uh, in seniors several years ago? <laughs> I was like, cool. So he has been playing for a long time, right? He, yeah. has, uh, he has a lot of experience when, uh, when it comes down to playing the game. I always see him in the Cups in the Netherlands, like being in top 8. Oh, there's a lot of fire energy prize for Alexander. Yikes. It's a lot. <laughs> a lot. That is a yikes. But... We are ready to get underway, I think. Um, but there is, uh, yeah, five of the 14 Fire Energy prized. And uh, the prize cards for Brennan are slightly less important. Yeah, it's not that impactful. Like, um, sometimes if a lot of energies are prized, it can be difficult to find them. Um, but, um, yeah, one energy in the prizes shouldn't be too bad. And um, also, one of his power plants, but power plant is not that important in this matchup. Not like, here. Reshizad does have especially a lot of counter stadiums. Yeah, so. especially also the fact that uh, this is a build with only the two DNA. Like, many of these oh, builds okay. are actually playing four, right? So, he's actually cut down onto two. Yeah, that's a cut I can see, definitely. Um, but actually, the reason for that is that he's playing, uh, like, they like playing a higher count of non-GX options. Yes. Like, some people are even playing with like just throwing out the Reshiram Charizard altogether. Yes, I've I seen that before. I like don't like, but whatever. Um, and then you have the Persephone and the Turtonator. So you can discard from hand or from board. Yeah, you, so have, you have a lot of options. So no matter where your energy is, you can get value for them as we get underway. Yes. As we see, Jirachi start for Alexander. Very nice. Um, and the communication. So... Like, you see your opponent flipping a spirit to him. What do you really go... Okay. What do you really go for? Um, well, well, your first thought is, right, I'm going to have to make sure that we can just be very efficient with attacks, especially yes. in a deck that has such big damage output. You don't need it. You just need to be kind of hitting 50 damage at any yeah. given turn for most of this game. And you just kind of prod your way through. You don't have to kind of blow them out of the water like you normally do against tag teams. You're very gently blowing the spirit tombs over, basically. <laughs> it's like, oh, yes. just go away. But we see a very, very good start already for Alexander. Yeah, being able to find two of his one prize attackers already. Yeah, and I think um, that's where he's really going to have nice. to go. Yes, is for Spirit sure. can take a turn or two to get himself set up. And if he, in doing so, it can take a little while. Um, yeah, it often kind of fi falls behind on prizes in the early game. Yeah, because like you have to build Spike for several turns mm -hmm. in a row in yes. order to take the KOs. And... Okay, you can kind of rainbow energy and do it that way, but it's just so slow. You can t you can deal with the Jirachis very early on. Yes, that's, that's certainly kind of really nice. Like I, um, I think like the main weakness of those non GX decks is that nest ball rotated, right? Yeah. And I mean, you have elms to find your spirit tombs, but you also have some other parts uh, in these decks that are really important that can't be found by elms. Like Brennan uses a. Uh, 
the striker line um, to find to, to draw cards in the middle of the game. Also, he plays Jirachi, and all of these things can't be found by Elm that easily. You need to Elm and then communicate them away into the deck to find the Pokemon you want. Yeah. So that's rather difficult. Sometimes these non-GX decks can be a little inconsistent, but we see a s this really a nice start. This is a big turn, right? Yes. Because it's half Welder, right. Something's getting KO'd next turn. Yes. And since I only have to really discard maybe one or two of my energies, it's going to happen every single turn. Well, that's a really, really bad hand from Brennan. Game two. Yes. There we go. Game it two. Go next. Wow. <laughs> okay. He just has nothing in his hand. I All mean, right. That is really awful because, especially so, both of these players, basically their first time on uh, stream is Masters. Uh, yes. From what we can gather. And on a winning in. And it's you don't want to see that. It's yeah. a high stress situation already. And then to go, oh, well, I'm going to have to win two in a row because I just straight up bricked. Yeah. Of That's always no unfortunate. Pokemon. Yes. Alexander, Alexander did hit the nuts. He did get the, yeah, the perfect sure. turn, turn one, really. But, but at least you want to see a game out of both players, yeah. right? And um, yeah, definitely we're hoping for a better start for Brennan in the in the next game to like see the matchup play out, see how it shakes out uh, in the end and who can come Ironically, out of Ironically, it's actually these kind of slower uh, single prize decks actually tend to have longer games. Yeah, for sure, because your opponent takes only takes one prize, right? So it means that the games can take a very, very long time to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, Manama has this issue. Is yes. One of many issues that I have with Manama. Um, but when you lose game one so quickly, you have to win two yes. to win this, to get your winning in. This is now a huge ask because your game, okay, you can probably take fairly quick knockouts and you can deal with the Turtonator and the Victinis, but you're going to be s such a disadvantage because you're going to have to get there yes. very like quickly. You, c you can't afford to take too much time. And even though we've only just started the round, you have to win Time two. is already like pressuring yeah. uh, Brennan because he needs to win two, yes. And... Um, yeah, Alexander obviously wants to avoid putting down those uh, big tag team Pokemon, and um, yeah, makes it will will make it really hard for Brennan to take those huge one shots well, on the on the GX. Yeah, so the the list that Alexander is playing is actually a really nice list for this exact style of matchup. Where you're against decks where you're expecting to have single prize like. They, they want to trade efficiently, but you actually now have three very, very good non-GX attackers. Yes. And just that alone makes it very straightforward. You can even go into a Ninetales to attack if you really need yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It has a decent attack in this matchup because it does enough damage. Yes. As we see the prize cards for Brennan. Not too bad. It's um, it's fine, I guess. Um yeah, he plays he plays two blitzers, so that's the not an issue. The hand, uh, the price cards for Alexander are actually really awkward. The double uh, communication yeah, cherish ball. That's going to be a slower start than last. You game. want to find be able to find your Pokemon. As Brennan opens the Professor, and that's what you want to see. Much better start for Brennan. Yes. He actually has a bench. Yes, perfect. Right. He's not. You have some people to bring on in the case of things going horribly wrong <laughs> up front. You're like, wait, well, I've got a backup plan. So he's actually playing very smartly, playing the six stage HP Blitzer. So yeah, searches them out with M to have the option to go into the striker turn two if everything else fails. You can just go get a new hand and uh, discard draw four, and then yeah, I'll go from there. You can see that clearly going. Right, I don't need my tech attackers in this one. My spirit tombs are efficient enough. Yes. Um, yeah, there are 20 Pokemon in Brennan's list. So uh, you would expect, like, he had three communication <laughs> in the <laughs> opening no. hand last turn, so you would expect some Pokemon, but no. You know, having that not. many Pokemon in, in, in the deck and not being able to hit any of them is, is kind of concerning. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, it happens, but. Building some spite on the Spirit Tomb, so that's always, like, I always forget. When I played Spirit Tomb, when I played Spirit Tomb earlier, uh, like, four months ago, or three months ago, when Zapdos Beast was around, I always forgot. Uh, to build spite, but yeah, really important to remember. Always, always do it. Well done for two. Raw from Alexander's hand, uh, being able to find a Jirachi right there. Um, Skateboard. Yes. Attach. Oh, really oh, he's nice. got another brilliant hand. Yeah, that's. Really he's not even going to bother cherish balling because he's just going to go. Nope, I'm just going to get rid of the other Dene. Yeah, did a change, get a new hand, and then he will be able to take the knockout um, for sure. And that's really important because you would, yeah you just want to take your six prizes as fast as possible, because Spiritum trades really well in the late game, mm -hmm. um, and yeah you want to be able to overwhelm it um, yeah. early. Yep, well you see straight away it's just discard uh, the one from hand. Cool, one one down. Yeah. Next. 
Only five more to go. <laughs> but, you know, they build Spite. The rainbow attachment is actually uh, a pretty important thing because this helps again with the damage, putting it up to 70 now. Yeah, and with the hustle birds, um, it would be enough for a KO, I think. Uh, um. is no, no, because, oh uh, no, I think it is now. Uh, I think it can put it up to 130. Uh, I can't remember the hustle belt damage. But he's only playing three copies and he has prized one of the copies of hustle mm -hmm. belt. Um, so, so finding the tool card is slightly more difficult. Uh, yeah. He doesn't appear to have it. So it's 60 more. So it would be actually be enough. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as we see, yeah, Zip Striker, I think, uh, really nice. Uh, oh, he, no, he, he got it, right? He got it. So he actually can take the KO. So he yeah. can actually um, attach to the active retreat into uh, the... Rainbow Energy, Spiritomb, mm -hmm. Hustle and Belt, KO. The KO, yes. And what? Oh, that was a custom catcher. Oh, a custom catcher. Okay. From the, from the tiny glimpse of a card yeah, that yeah. I could see, it's it looks very super, similar. It's always super, super hard to tell. Uh -huh. I know. Um, it doesn't look like he got it here either. Oh, so no. So the Zip Striker in the active retreats, Jirachi. Just going for Stellar Wish and keeping a Spirit Tombs is, is uh, the correct play, definitely. Yeah. Oh, and if he has a switch, he can uh, grab the... He's not playing any copy of switching cards. Oh, okay. I see Jirachi. I just assume switching cards, but... Um, Fairly safe yeah, assumption. Never mind. Um, only escape boards is the only retreating option um, for Brennan. So I mean, it's fine. I don't um, mind taking the power plant here for two reasons. First of all... You want to get rid of that giant half because it just means that Alexander can just go, wait, I can just KO this again by just <laughs> going, but I just half for KO every turn. What are you going to do? Yeah, now you force him to at least have the energy, but there it already is. And he also has a fire crystal in hand. I don't think Alexander does want to do a lot this turn. Maybe like switch and Stella Wish, but other than I that, he's really fine. I I think. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure you even need to invest the switch this turn, right? You can just take the KO. You can tell Brennan's having a very slow start even by a slow start standard. Yes. Um, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, but he's going to go for it, still a wish, maybe get extra attackers or welders because he knows that if this Blitzephalon does get KO, You want to have a backup welder and, and back, a backup attacker in hand already if your Blitzephalon gets KO'd. Um, but yeah, he's investing the switch saying, okay, I want to get some, I want to thin my deck out a little bit. Um, want to dig through it, and there's a communication which will be able to find one of his um, one prize attackers. Putting back the Reshiram Charizard. I don't even think you would bother setting up Nine Tails because you just KO whatever is in front of you anyway, yeah. and there are no JX Pokemon in Brennan's deck. So, yeah, Nine Tails can just go uh, to the, to the Brin probably, but <laughs> he's gonna set it up. Well, no, it's because it's also a non-GX attacker that he can yeah. power efficiently. Yeah, I guess. I like, guess that's fine. It's, it's kind of weird in this matchup. If it's actually, the gust effect isn't as important, though he would obviously be able to, like, in an ideal world, taking chaos on the Spiritombs is better, especially because there's no way of recovering the Spiritombs in this list. Yeah, true. So okay. I guess it makes sense, but it feels like setting up your non-GX stage one line only for, like, to be... Only to attack with it with three energy to bit, do ninety. Bit weird, yeah, yeah, feels always feels a little bit weak, but um, definitely like a sign of a, a good player to always see those options that your deck presents to you, even if it's not like the obvious one, uh, but rather the the, uh, the option that you might not consider in the first place. So, Brennan would Id in an ideal world would be looking for some Manga Buzzwall right now, but that's not an option. He's actually prized his own. Oh copy. yeah, he prized it. Uh, would be able to take the return KO on the Blissephalon. But getting the Ditto down now is a really uh, important uh, turn because he needs it to be able to go into any of his attack attackers in case the Spirit Tombs are both KO'd very quickly. Yeah, so there's go the, there goes the Spite. Yep, up to enough now to KO the Persephalon without the tool. Yes, and there's an Adventure Bag finding uh, probably a Hustle Belt and uh, something else, maybe an Escape Board, but I'm not sure. Probably, maybe just one. One hustle belt because I'm not sure if you actually want to attach the other hustle belt because you your spirit it, right? tomb will get KO'd anyway. Yeah, just one hustle belt of the adventure back. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it's maybe kind of risky to to um, zip striker this hand away because he has the rainbow in hand and your rainbows are really really valuable resources that you want to keep. Like yeah, so he's gonna go for the gear first, which means he's. Oh, if he gets a Cynthia off the gear, he's totally fine, yeah. right? Oh, oh, Elm 
So he's going to go okay. get the other spirit tomb to start uh, building spite with that, which means he's probably not. He might want to still hold that rainbow though, because he can attach the rainbow to it next turn, which and then the just spirit sprint. Tomb. Yeah, yeah, just sprint away next turn. Yeah, and I think hold that's it. a safer. Oh okay. No, okay. Never okay. mind. <laughs> Ignore us. Um, <laughs> this is why we're, we're talking about the game and not playing our winning into a top eight. Uh, but we see Snorrent, we see Nehilego. That like we I see the team up nine tails in his hand. Like this could be a really key card in this matchup if he manages to get manages to get rid of um, the the non GX attackers on Alexander's board. But Alexander has set up the nine t uh, the Volpix, so yeah. he could be he will be able to gust around the nine tails. Yeah. Uh, eventually. But there was no secondary attacker established for Alexander. He's gonna have to go find yeah. one now. He does have the Cherish Ball. And even with Let's see fully damaged, hustle belted spirit tombs, you're not taking a one hit KO on a Reshi Ram Charizard ever. Yeah, but so like there's there's um, a Frostless in Brandon's deck that can take uh, yeah, the one true. shot on on the Reshi Ram Charizard. So if Alexander becomes like like if he is not careful and benches it, thinking okay, my opponent does not have any options to one hit KO it, then he could be um, yeah cause um, so like that yeah. was the Heatran. Yep. Yeah, he that's the Heatran. Heatran? I mean, you could just GX attack this turn, right? Yeah, that's fine. Takes the KO, why not? If I mean, you you won't really use any other GX attack, right? No. You <laughs> so deal you 200 well to the sp poor Spirit Tomb. No, uh, that's... Uh <laughs> yeah, you may as well just go 10. Yeah. yeah you know, the GX attack, admittedly for 50 yeah. right now, but 50 is enough, so why not? Uh, take the KO and just kind of put Brandon under pressure and kind of on a clock to go right you you, you got to start dealing with, with more than just an attacker you yeah you're gonna get many you have to ready. deal a, um, a little bit more damage yeah. um, quite a few energy already in the discard pile i think for alexander so yeah means the victini is live if he ever gets to it but he also plays fire crystal so yeah he's got one in this he's got one in hand and he's got one in his acro bike he's trying to work out if he needs that now or the half oh. Well, he's already kind of used the Persephalon, which needs the energy in hand. The yeah. Eternator needs it on board anyway, so you need more cards than just a half to get that ready. As we see. Yeah, Fire Crystal. Fire Crystal. I think the Fire Crystal version might be a little bit better against those uh, Spirit Tomb decks, since mm -hmm. you have the option to recover a little bit of energy, not just throw all of them away, uh, throw all of them back into your deck with Victini and deal like 200 damage. No, you can just recover three if you need them and yeah, put them back into your hand. Yeah, you don't want to basically waste damage, right? Dealing 200 when they have 10 HP. It's just Easy not efficient use of your resources. And by having access to the Fire Crystals, you can be more efficient, which is very important. So yeah. we now see the Nine Tails, uh, the Nine Temptations ability. And he's just going to pass. Oh, he can't use Heatran because the power plant is in oh play. Oh, yeah, of course. He could, I mean, he could have played it, retreated, and attached. Yeah. He could have He could have still used it. But it looks like with the second, uh, with the Welder to the Nine Tails, he might just be going, no, wait, hang on. If I declare 90, <laughs> it's still enough. for 90. Yeah, uh, this is fine. Also, I think Brandon wants to hide a little bit uh, that he's playing like Frostless. Maybe, uh, maybe his opponent knows already. Uh, okay, okay, he's well just going to okay. show it. I think like this is maybe maybe valuable. Just hiding that you're playing a one shot uh, an attacker that can one shot your opponent's main attacker. But there's still also merit probably in revealing it yeah. because then your opponent starts playing around it. And sometimes if they're playing around a threat, they play into other threats. So there's yeah. kind of a merit like, to it both ways. Okay, yeah, that's true, that's true. So we see another Spirit Tomb. He does have to start establishing these because as one gets knocked out, you need to have the next one ready to do something and then the next one and kind of hard chaining them all together. Yes, for sure. Um, let's see what he does. I don't think he, he wants to sprint He wants to sprint away this hand. No, um, this hand looks fairly good. But no, he's no, no, actually, no, now I look at it again, it's really not. Okay, okay. <laughs> so... Okay, the black market's actually a nice pickup. So can basically deny Alex ta Alexander taking any prizes. Yeah, forces his opponent up. to find a counter stadium. Which is not hard. There are uh, still the, the Heat Factory and I think another copy of the... Oh, the Heat Factory's prize. Okay. So this could actually become, become relevant. Yeah, there are two hearts gone, I believe, and then the Heat Factory, so... So there's only one stadium out currently. But he's just going to hold the... Sprint um, into Cynthia. Yeah. Which is fine. Get a new hand. See what you can get. Get more cards, more options. Um, um, he may be looking for something like a custom, like 
maybe praying for a like, double custom catcher here. Like it's it's a long shot, but and he hasn't hit he hasn't hit it anyway. But yeah. He may be just going. Look, I need to get something. He's gonna retreat. Okay, oh, and use that's the yeah, that's sure. really nice because of, because it forces more resources from Alexander to take a KO. Like either uh, he needs to find a replacement stadium, attack with Heatran, or he needs to gust around the um, the the Hoopa. But then he does not deal with it. Right then, yeah. still um, the Hoopa can come back eventually and um, be be in the active again and. Maybe tank a hit or something because if you attack with nine hits, you're only dealing ninety damage, right? And then Hooper actually is able to tank a hit from a Rishizat deck, yeah. which is <laughs> 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 kind of funny. It does only do a small amount of damage. Yeah, back yeah, is of the course. Issue. So having to play around the Hooper is not really a big deal. Like Alex isn't gonna be able to bench another Zeni this turn because yeah. he's, already, he's only playing two, and one is in play, one is in the discard pile. Uh, and the only other ability he can play down is the Heatran, but... Yeah, that's true, that's true. Uh, was the and also... Was the damage calculation correct from last turn? Um, so, uh, because the power plant was in play... Oh, yeah, and the power... That's the what I was about to say. The power plant shuts off the, um, the GX Pokemon's abilities, yeah, so, so the they have no off. abilities, yeah. right? The wording is they have no abilities. So, and Hooper deals damage based on uh, your opponent's Pokemon's abilities in play, mm -hmm. and they have no abilities. That's actually a really inter interesting interaction that came up to me in playing a League Cup. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I think we have a little bit of time here. Okay, they're just gonna continue playing. Um, as long as everyone's... Let's see what happens. Um, yeah, uh, they, they come are back having... To us, uh, briefly whilst we uh, resolve the situation. They have a little bit of a discussion right there. Yeah, I don't think the damage wa was enough, right? It only deals 50 damage. Um. So what we'll see now is... Yeah, it's now not a knockout on the Jirachi. Um, so we'll come back to us. Oh, that's unlucky. Yeah. I mean, these are the things that... like. There's a lot of interactions in these decks where they're designed to have this heavy interactions play style of like can interfere and do many things at the m in many different ways. Yeah. And a combination of Hooper and um, and Power Plant can kind of You need overlap. to be really careful yeah, with and that. It's something you have to keep in mind because they both help deal with these ability-based decks, mm -hmm. but in a mutually exclusive way, right? If one's yeah. doing the thing, the other one's not able to do the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. That's like... The uh, interesting interaction I wanted to talk about is like, yeah, m uh, I was playing Mewtwo in a cup recently and my opponent was playing Slowpoke Psyduck, like the quad tag team deck, and he had uh, Hoopa as his only non jx attacker. But he I want to go to your league cup, this sounds way <laughs> more fun. It <laughs> was ne in the <laughs> Netherlands, actually. Um, and yeah, people sometimes play funny decks, which is really <laughs> nice. Um, so he was he had no outs to my tag perch, uh, but he, ca um, he put down Power Plant. Um, and then he attacked. He decided to take wi to attack with Hoopa, and I was like, "Okay, your Hoopa is only dealing 10 damage because all my abilities are turned off, so I don't mind the Hoopa uh, attacking." And then he had to kick my uh, he kick his own power plant to be able to deal damage again, and I was at, uh, able to attack with Mewtwo <laughs> again. So I was like, "Okay, fine, kick it's the stadium for me." Yeah, he kind of kind of rocking a hard place situation there. Yeah, like, yeah, that was well rather I lose unfortunate. If I do this, or I do 10. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and yeah, it's it's not uh, in a really um, unfortunate circumstance, but this is this is the thing is we have a lot of cards right now that have a lot of overlap with how yeah. they're applied. So you can kind of double down on certain matchups, like matchups that should be difficult because like if you think you're going to struggle against things like ability ram uh, ability Reshu ram Charizard or any of the uh, any basically Mewtwo, any of the things playing a Denny engine, you can double down. You can Hooper. To yeah. do it in an aggressive way, or you can kind of power plant them, and like the power plant is actually more important if you're going to stamp because of the combo. Yeah, stamp power plant is really powerful. Right, the stamp com uh, combo. We with see power plant. we see it in Picorom like yeah, exactly. all the time. We al no. also judge, which is just cheese. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I, but having these options available are really important, and it does pose problems not just in deck building because you now have to make sure that you aren't kind of having too many contradictory effects in one deck. You need them to kind of be vaguely smooth. But yes, that's true. But if we can, Id in an ideal world, you kind of want to have enough to cover it. Also, they kind of have like different applications, right? Because in, in this in particular, Hooper is good against Malamar. Mm -hmm. Power Plant, 
awful against Manama. Yeah, that's true. You you usually you use it in different matchups, yeah. right? But sometimes you ca um Well, sometimes they double up because yeah. they're both uh, uh, GXs with abilities and also not. Um yeah, you get in those awkward situations where you just are presented the opportunity to do something. I mean, um, Brennan could have just taken the knockout with the spirit tomb on this turn. Uh, there was no need yep. to retreat into the Hooper yep. and um, attack with evil admonition. Was well, certainly like. Um, a nice play to maybe deny a knockout or make it harder um, mm. for for Alexander, like having him to invest uh, more resources. But yeah, he could just uh, could, could could just have attacked with the active. Yeah, so. um, I I can see why you wouldn't want to. Yeah, like obviously for, sure. for obvious reasons. But um, in terms of the game state, it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, so you, s you still want to be able to come back late game. So yeah, yeah. and. It's that's the late game is exactly when the spirit tombs are at their most dangerous. Yes, um, especially if you, uh, as it looks like they're going to be able to kind of tempo through the, uh, the early single prize attackers, mm -hmm. um, but will be able to get through those quickly enough that then they have no choice but to use the bigger attackers, and that's when you want your spirit tombs ready because they kind of scales like the damage from a, a spirit tomb scales as the game goes, right? Yes. Early turns you can very e easily deal with uh, Jirachis which is perfect for against Arta decks. Yes. And then you kind of swing gently into mid to late game. Where yeah, mid game you can deal with the Dennis at some point. Yeah. And then in the very late game, you're able to deal like 200 and plus damage with the hustle birds exactly. kicking in at some point. So, so like it kind of like, it kind of very smoothly transitions from A through to B through to C in terms of the phases of the game. Yes. Um, but doesn't necessarily do so consistently. Um, this is actually one of the things that, like, so now we were like a few tournaments into the post rotation format. Having things like th the reason why these tag team GXs and GX decks are so dominant is they just have Cherish Ball. Yes. And no other deck has anything like a Nest Ball <laughs> or anything like that, which makes life so yeah. much more difficult like to set up. Like, Brennan needed to rely on the communications, and sometimes, like we saw in game one, communications just don't work out. Yep, as, as we, we get back underway. Yes. So we'll wait for uh, we'll, we'll find out what the ruling was so we can update you guys yes. in a moment. Um, but meanwhile, Alexander continuing the turn. Uh, the Jirachi um, is basically uh, so it looks like basically they just were round two before the attack. I did the, the corrected the attack damage. Um, so it's a double prize pen penalty against uh, Brennan for doing the incorrect damage and then uh, rewind the game state. So the Jirachi is there with fifty and just continue as. It would have been um, so nice, simple solution. Yeah, and Alexander is in just in uh, such a good spot, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no. double to prize penalty when you're against a deck that really wants to be trading so efficiently. Yeah. Well, that's just two less prize cards. Like that's the same as this thing suddenly having a GX in it. Yes. And that makes your life so much easier. You only have to take three knockouts, and if you look at the amount of damage on all these spirit tombs, you can kind of just have a slightly stiff breeze, and they'll just fall over. Yeah, mm. and now we see also the Heatran coming down, being charged up, and yeah, gusting up the the spirit tomb, <laughs> like so that. it can't, like the one with the hustle belt, so it forces Brennan to find another hustle belt, and like eventually he when when he needs to deal with the Heatran, right? Yeah. Um, but now he first Brennan needs to deal with the nine tails that is inactive, which shouldn't be too difficult, but still could pose some kind of problem. Yeah. Um, but he has the no, he has only the snow run in play uh, in hand, not the not the frostless just yet. Um, yeah, what he, wa what he wants to do is he can just go in, attack the nine tails. Yeah, um, he's gonna have to use the one with the rainbow energy, build spite on the others in the meantime. Yeah, there comes uh, the snow run, and then Cynthia again. Yes. So actually, one of the few decks we've seen this weekend still playing high counts of Cynthia. Um, most decks are down to like maybe one because they're playing full welder and they've gone. I don't need any more. Yeah, like so Bless Ephelon still plays for Cynthia, but yeah. but yeah. like most decks have like really cut down yeah. on the Cynthia and Lily counts that this still has zero. Also, Lily, but earlier in the season there were like other supporters in Muto decks, but now we've seen a lot of Muto decks only playing the four welder again. I still prefer the Haku builds, but that's just each to their own. Yeah, but okay, so now we see communication for. What's he going to go for? Is he going for the frost lass? That's also like th that feels super bad. We see Brennan shaking his head. That feels uh, kind of suboptimal for him because he put down the snow run and he only plays one frost lass yep. and he just put that frost lass on the ditto. So his snow run is basically a dead a dead card on the bench. It's another um, sprint. 
Yeah, we see the sprint. Okay. Black market. That's actually really big. This kind of helps him get back into the game now that yeah. he, uh, with the prize penalty. I mean, Alex can't win if he can't take prizes. Yes. Um, it also means the Hooper now does the damage he thinks it does. Um, yes. So this next turn, um, he'd actually be able to do seven. Uh, you, you can't take the KO here, but he actually does relevant damage um, with the Hooper now. Mm -hmm. So a very big deal. Yeah, but attacking with the Spiritomb, hoping that Alexander cannot find a counter save. There it is. KO on the Ninetales. Jirachi promoted. Yes. Um, only needing to take one more prize card There's for Alex, I believe. Yeah, yeah, he needs to take this prize card. So, so now it's unfortunate that he lost his nine tails. Like it w maybe it would have been better to take with something else on the last turn because now you could uh, um, the option to Wait, gust something is Alex up. not noticed that he can just attack and attack. But uh, black market. Oh so yeah, so, so he, he can't take a prize. Save, sure, okay. So he just wants his counter save yeah. and then, he, then he's basically just going to go forward and yeah, declare yeah. a GX attack. But this is where those giant halves earlier. Yeah. Yeah, and also, like, I as I was saying, if he had a Nine Tails, he could gust around and just pull something out that is not a Darkness Pokemon. Um, so, so yeah, we we'll see one. him dig for the uh, for the stadium right there. Um, There's no the Dene. Okay, Acrobike, one more chance. Yeah, he can still retreat and sell a wish with the other. It's a Fire Crystal, I think. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I I would just retreat, take a take a slow approach, bench the other yeah, Jirachi, yeah. retreat. You know that your opponent has a couple of turns, like they're not going to be able to gust around these Jirachis. You can just leave them active. Yeah, that's and then true. eventually find the stadium for the turn that you are able to play it and get value. Yeah, there's a switch. Um, like could uh, could give him some mobility. Um, on there is board also an later. argument actually just taking the knockout because I don't. I oh know Brennan can now respond because of the uh, the Frostlast. Yeah. But there was an argument to maybe just saying that you can take the knockout even if you don't take the prize. There we see a switch into the third Jirachi. <laughs> really nice. <laughs> all right. We'll play all the Jirachis. Let's go. Yes. Yeah, he wants to thin out his deck as much as possible. Yeah. and He can just uh, sacrifice three Jirachis in a row and then... Yeah, um, they, they, they can all get knocked out and it's not really a problem. Like... And he will always get like two stellar wishes in because he has the Jirachi with the skateboard. And uh, if he does not hit the giant earth, he can just retreat into the other uh, Jirachi, get another stellar wish in, and just uh, yeah, just wait. Yep. To see communication. He's probably communication communicating this uh, this rushes out back in, and then wait. I don't didn't see a stadium. Yeah, not in yet. In that in that glance at the deck, I. It's only a very brief glance, but I didn't see one. And if that's the case... That would be really unfortunate. <laughs> he's a little bit stuck. Because he's gone through two... I saw two halves, and the Heat Factory is obviously still prized. So he hasn't got it in hand. So he's just going to see he's if he wakes up. Pass. And he does. Uh, Spirit Tomb. So maybe Bren has a chance. If, they are act if it's actually... If Alexander takes too long to find, this, find his counter stadium... Yeah, um, yeah. Black market that like last chance win condition that you always have to expect going up against those dark type decks, because it can reduce uh, the number of prize cards um, that are taken. So yeah, you really need to be careful about that when yep. you go uh, go up against uh, things like the spirit room. Yeah. Now with this, now it's going to be a case of. Maybe forgetting it's a card. It's not a card that's seen an awful lot of play. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, uh, you have to always have to um, yeah, keep in mind that... Like, Spiritomb is not popular, so... You you forget very easily what cards they usually include in their list. So, so it's a Fire Crystal. Get two more energy. Yeah. Probably using a Welder, if he has it, to just draw some more cards. I mean, you um, might as well at this point, right? Yes. He only has... Um, Do you have another Nine Tails left in his deck? Because that's the other out, right? Yeah, there's the Nine Tails. Okay, and he has the energy. Okay, and yep. he can and just, just choose something that's not it, and that is the game. So yeah, he did have it. it. And there we go. Perfect. Yep. So that means Alex should be. I think I've worked it out that I think it was 31 points was the bubble yes. around there. So that puts him on 32 points, which means he's in. Yeah, probably. Yeah, most likely um, he's in. So we'll ha so top eight is coming up soon, um, mm -hmm. and actually for top eight, we have some really interesting. Uh, we have some uh, prizes to be given out in chat. 
yes. um, some card market uh, vouchers from our sponsors. Um, so we'll sort of raffle out uh, for these. Uh, we'll spread them out through top eight for now. Yes. Um, but that was actually a really interesting, unfortunate yes, series. Yes, it was really unfortunate that this double price penalty happened. And it then could game have been one as well. Yeah, like game one really as well. Unlucky. Yes, that's that's really sad. But still, it should be should be enough for um, for Brennan to maybe be in top sixteen. Yes, uh, in, in top 32 for sure. So yep. still a great accomplishment yeah, really uh, for such a young player yeah. and such a big uh, tournament. So and especially bringing something a little bit different in terms of depth. Yes, for like sure. It's very easy to play safe. And sometimes oh, something that sometimes comes work out for you, but sometimes you might be tempted to go, no, I want to take a little bit of a risk in Spiritum. I've, well, whenever I played it, I enjoy playing it. So he's in a position where he's probably okay. Yes. Um, so it'll be a very interesting uh, like tournament for him, and I'm sure he's probably got an awful lot of very interesting games, he w like stories to talk about, because yes. he has loads of like those things. Of, like, and I hit the card, and then frost that. But hey, I win. <laughs> um, but now uh, Alexander is probably locked in to the top eight. We'll go to a short break. If during this short break you feel like using a subscription, you say you have a Twitch Prime subscription or subscribe, we can do that now on the channel, and that Yay. means that we can. We're working on emotes. Give us some ideas. Um, but if more people subscribe, we can also get more emotes, which means we can have even more of your ideas. Um, but stay tuned. We'll be back in maybe 10, 20 minutes with Top 8. See ya.